G'day, Azza here from Azatac with episode four of Azatac Talk Show. On this episode, I'll be going over the IPSC uh, belt and holster setups. In this video, I'll go over some of the setups I have, some of the setups I've seen downrange, and uh, some considerations when buying your first rig. All this is coming right up just after this. G'day, welcome to Az Attack, where we can help you develop the skills to get round turn range, consistent, fast, and on target. Hey, if you're new here, uh, I'll be making videos uh, helping out new shooters of our community. Uh, I intend on bringing some more content like this, as well as interviews uh, with other competition IPSC shooters, trainers, shop owners, and uh, tactical product reviews uh, of gear that we use downrange. Uh, if this interests you, please uh, consider subscribing uh, and turning on notifications. And also, if you get value out of these videos, uh, please smash the like button for me. So the first consideration uh, with your belt it is uh, the rigidity of the belt itself. Uh, this is the critical element of your belt. Uh, it needs to be nice and rigid uh, to be able to hold up your holster and your magazine pouches um, plus you want your inner to be nice and rigid too so once you've got it in your loops your outer belt uh, velcros onto it nice and tight and, and holds your holster with the weight of your pistol and all your magazines when uh, they are fully loaded so i've got a couple of different belts here uh, the main belt that i use that I've been using is uh, JR Holster. Uh, you can uh, purchase these from uh, your local gun shop. Uh, gun shops that I know uh, that sell them are uh, Three Gun Tactical and also Viper Holsters also sell uh, the JR Holster. You can also probably find them online. The other type of belt rig uh, that I've got is a uh, double alpha belt rig. Uh, I don't mind the double alpha belt rig. I got it in size 32, uh, the same as my JR holster belts. Uh, what I found with the double alpha is that I'm a size 32 pants, only getting probably that much lap over in the same with with the double alpha outer belt probably about 50 mil lap over on the velcro so if you were to buy double alpha uh, definitely go up one or two sizes uh, just to have that extra extra lap over my JR I've got about 120 or 150 mil of overlap and I like to have mine have my belt lapped at the back so I don't have too any too much bulk here at the front so I've done some research for you on Amazon looking for belts that you can buy online directly from Amazon. I found some good links. Uh, there's one in particular, it's called a Black Scorpion Belt. Uh, looks like a really well-made belt. Quite like this double alpha belt, except it's got a lot more stitching. It's got a lot of stitching around here. Uh, looks like it's a very good quality belt. Uh, <clears throat> you can find a link uh, to that product in Amazon in the description below. Now I'd just like to tell you about uh, the links in the description. None of these links will charge you any money. They are affiliate links and they just take you uh, straight to the product in Amazon that I've researched for you. Uh, as Again, it will not charge you any money or put any money on top of the actual product price. Uh, if you decide to purchase uh, this product through Amazon, Amazon will send me a small commission 
uh, for having this link on my in my video description. So if you'd like to check that out, just click the link below. It'll send you to Amazon, and feel free to uh, do some more research on Amazon. There is another product there that I put in there. It's called a uh, tough belt. It comes in different colours. Doesn't look like it is as good a quality as the Scorpion. So another thing that you'll want to purchase with your belt, so you'll get one free belt keeper. Uh, this goes around your inner and your outer to help the security of your outer belt to your inner belt. I would recommend uh, buying another two or three depending on uh, your waist size and uh, if you want to have two on the either side of your pistol. Okay, so now we get into the second part of this video, which is the holster. So there's a couple of different types of holsters that you can get. I've got four holsters for you here, here to look at. So the first holster to look at is the Double Alpha PDR Pro 2. It is a paddle type holster. Uh, these are made to comply for USP PSA and action pistol when shooting production. Uh, the second type of holster that I am going to show you today is a ghost holster. Uh, this ghost holster is there is a little bit of an old school uh, ghost holster. Uh, <coughs> Double Alpha also brings out a holster like this now. Uh, I use this for my open gun. Third holster that I've got today is my Viper holster. So this is the holster that I use pretty much every time I go to the range for production. Uh, this is my competition holster. I use this every time I go to the, uh, every time I go to the range. This is my main holster. Uh, very good quality Australian made holster. I've left a link to Viper holsters and to Three Gun Tactical. Three Gun Tactical has uh, the Viper holsters or you can go to the Viper Holster website and find some distributors in your area that distribute uh, Viper Holsters. If you're in Northern Queensland, uh, the best place to go to get your Viper Holster is Hall's Firearms. Hall's Firearms has the Viper Holster and the uh, JR Holster uh, belts as well. So I have a uh, old school holster here. It's a bit uh, ratty. It's an old school revolver holster. So we'll start off and have a look at, at the I call them a paddle type holster which is the PDR Pro 2 from Double Alpha. Uh, so it's it's a pretty neat holster. Uh, it does the job and if you need to use it for uh, uh, discipline that you're going to shoot, so if you're going to shoot action production, this is, uh, this is why I have it, because I used to shoot uh, NRA action match. Uh, if you need this holster for this, I would suggest getting one of these. The features of this holster is that you, you tighten it up here, to get your retention and then you loosen it so that it comes out. So one thing to consider with this type of holster is that when you go for your draw you have to pull it up so your muzzle clears that part there. So the second holster I'm going to show you today is the ghost holster. Uh, the ghost holster a really good retention uh, sits sits like that <clears throat> does sit a fair way from your body uh, this is definitely the distance it is, it is away now is definitely not uh, production legal legal but I've got my production gun in here just to show you that this will retain my production gun to show you the versatility of the ghost holster that I've got and why I have the same type of pistols. Uh, this allows me to use this one setup. 
So when I use my standard gun or my open pistol or my open action match pistol, I just use this one holster and it holds, as you can see, it holds my production gun as well. This is the holster that I'd use if I was going down to the range to conduct some sighting in and I wanted to have my pistols on my holster as I was walking around the range uh, for security. I can use this holster for all my pistols regardless of barrel length. So just to show you now, here's my open gun on the same holster. Fits nice. And is retained. This is my Viper holster. This is the holster that I use predominantly for competition shooting in IPSC. This holster um, is my normal setup. Good to draw from. Noticing here it has a barrel locator for your barrel to go on, and it has a nice positive click once it's clicked in, and then it's got a, another function here. Uh, this tightens the spring to allow it to be retained, uh, retained securely while you're walking around the range. So I have a great confidence in my Viper holster that it is going to retain my pistol all day without it falling out or coming out unless I want the pistol to come out. That's the clip over top here. This is the old school uh, demonstration of a holster. It just goes onto your belt. Um, break free sort of holster. Uh, <clears throat> I recommend a holster, a Viper holster for my revolver. When I was shooting revolver in NRA action match before I got my semi-automatic I was using a Viper holster and I had no problems with my Viper holster. Uh, great retention and great confidence in my Viper holster. Uh, there is a lot of different brands of holsters out there. Uh, these are just the three that I have. Uh, I have seen uh, Double Alpha has a ghost style uh, holster now with no with no barrel guide. They also come out. They also have one now with a barrel guide. Uh, best to check out uh, Double Alpha's webpage for their latest holsters. Uh, <clears throat> Check out Viper holsters. Uh, Viper does some really good holsters. They're all exactly the same as this. This is his own design. Uh, <clears throat> okay, now I have a uh, get into uh, magazine pouches. Magazine pouches, there's a lot of different types of magazine pouches. Uh, I've got a couple here to show you. A double Alpha magazine pouch there. Uh, CR speed holster there and then I've got some magnetic holsters these are magnetic holsters from Viper he also sells magnetic holsters We've got two Safari Land magazine pouches at the front so I have three Viper pouches magazine pouches at the back in IPSC, uh, there is rules with where you have your magazines and your pistol holster in regards to your body. The only division that doesn't have this stipulation is open. In open, you can have your magazine pouches at the front, you can have your pistol at the front, you have anything anywhere you want. Uh, with every other division, uh, the the rule in the rule book and uh, please check up the rules and be really confident with the rules. One of the biggest tips that I always got down the range was uh, read through the rule book and so you know the rules inside and out of IPSC because there is so many rules and just get to know how the rule book flows. So what section you need to go to to check out what part of the rules uh, you are needing to comply with. With production, the pistol and your magazines cannot be in front of your hip bone. So definitely another consideration uh, when you're buying your magazine pouches 
is that uh, a magnet will be the next thing that you'll need down the track. You can even have, like I've got on here, uh, magnets for your magazine pouches, or you can get pouches that have magnets in them. So Viper does some magazine pouches like this, and they got the magnets at the back, and they can slide in and out. Totally up to you with the magnets. Uh, the magnets are very, very strong. Uh, so sometimes it is hard to get them off. Uh, with the plastic ones, they're really easy to get in and out. I've just got a magnet on the outside here for table starts where you're required to have all your magazines on the table and you might have two magazines like this grab them off the table, put them on, put them on your belt. Then you can load from that, <coughs> from that magnet. Some guys on the range I've seen will have a magnet right around the back here. Their sixth magazine for big stages where you may need to use all five magazines. Uh, the other sort of setup is instead of having this one here, um, <coughs> say on this, see on this CR holster, you could have a magnet on the front here. So it'd be on the front there like that. But once again, that magnet has to be with the magazine on it behind your hip. But if you're gonna start a match with a magazine on that, on that magnet, it has to be behind your hip. So careful with the magnet setups on the outside of your belt, make sure that they're not further than 50 mil away from your body. Um, and then you'll be sweat, you'll be sweet. So a quick summary of what we've gone through today is you wanna get a good belt straight away. Uh, click one of the links in the description below, I'll send you to Amazon if you can't get out to a gun shop to get your first belt. Uh, that Scorpion, black Scorpion belt, uh, looks like a really good belt uh, to buy uh, online. Otherwise, if you're going to the shop, uh, go down to uh, Three Gun Tactical, uh, check out his store there, and uh, he'll be able to uh, sort you out with a JR holster belt with a uh, Viper holster. So just to quickly sum it up today, you wanna go and get your, uh, your inner and outer belt with your belt keepers. Try out the holsters with the pistol that you want to buy in regards to what division you're going to shoot. Uh, if you want to shoot multiple pistols, you have an idea down the track, uh, you might be able to strategically buy a holster that may fit more than one pistol like my ghost holster. And then you want to consider what sort of magazine pouches you want. I would go something that's the lowest profile that you can get. If you can see here, the double alpha pouch is sitting a lot further away than the CR pouch there. Uh, good, good pouch, the double alpha. Uh, a lot of parts to the double alpha. Uh, <coughs> this CR holster is a lot more simple in design, the same as these Safari Land and the Viper pouches. So what I'd buy for a mag pouch is the lowest profile that you can buy within your price range. Uh, and again, spending the money at the start on good quality gear will make sure that it lasts long. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you did, please uh, hit the like button for me. Uh, next up on As Attack Talk Show, I'll be interviewing Adam Quinn from Three Gun Tactical, where we discuss uh, the new dry fire tool called uh, Cool Fire. And I'll go through the installation of the Cool Fire uh, into my Shadow 2 pistol for dry fire training. Uh, so I hope to catch up with you guys uh, next Saturday at 6 p.m. in the live comments where uh, I can answer your questions uh, in the comments section there. Until then, Keep on shooting and I'll catch you down the range.